Many people associate cataracts with aging and don't think about having their infants and young children checked for pediatric cataracts, but it does happen. In this episode of Aki Talk, Dr. Simon Fung will be discussing pediatric cataracts, how it differs in infants and children, what warning signs to look for, and what the different treatment options are. Dr. Fung? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Los Angeles, California, Dr. Simon Fung. Dr. Fung, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. My pleasure. Excellent. Well, again, it's our pleasure to have you here, Dr. Fung. And uh, for our purposes and for our audience, do you mind letting them know a little bit about your background and your specialty? Sure. So uh, as you heard, my name is Simon Fung. I'm currently an assistant professor uh, in ophthalmology. Uh, I look after children and adults, uh, mostly cornea and cataract, uh, as well as some anterior segments such as glaucoma issues. Uh, I was originally trained in London, hence the accent, uh, and then I went to do a fellowship uh, specifically for pediatric cornea and anterior segment uh, in Toronto, uh, and only after that I came to join Los Angeles. So uh, a mixture of uh, different experience all around the world. Well, excellent. Dr. Fung, thank you so much for that introduction. And again, thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Uh, so for our discussion today, Dr. Fung, we were hoping you can talk a little bit about uh, pediatric cataracts. What exactly is that? Yeah, so a cataract is a cloudy lens inside the eye. So our eye is like a camera, there's a lens inside and that helps to focus things. And children, just like adults, can have a lens in the eye as well. And in fact, these lenses are born with. Uh, but when the lens itself is cloudy, that's when we have a cataract. And children, for a variety of reasons, can also develop cataract at a very young age. Oh, well, I, 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 that's interesting information for me. Um, so I know, like, usually when we talk about cataracts, we're usually talking about, like you said, older, older individuals. So what causes childhood cataracts? That's a very good question. So a, as I mentioned, there are a number of various uh, different reasons why a child could develop a cataract. Uh, broadly speaking, we can break it down into what we call congenital, i.e. somebody who was born with cataracts, and also acquire somebody who develop a cataract later on, maybe because of some sort of trauma or some sort of inflammation in the eye uh, and a variety of reasons. Uh, but uh, I think broadly speaking, we can talk about you know, congenital ones and acquired ones. Perfect. Again, thank you for that, Dr. Fung. And uh, how, what is cataracts different in children than it is in adults? Or is it, are we talking about like kind of the same thing? Yeah, certainly. I think pediatric cataract is very different kind of cataracts compared to adults. Uh, to start off with, they're not very common. Uh, you, one would imagine that children do not usually get these cataracts anyway. Uh, and that is true. We estimate about 1 in 4,000 to 1 in 10,000 children develop one cataract. Not all cataracts require surgery, but some of them do. Uh, and when we are operating, the texture or the technique of removing these cataracts are very different to what we are used to uh, in doing ca adult cataract surgery. Well, perfect. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Fung. And um, so when should we start looking for cataracts in, in, in children? Is there a certain age that we should be like, hey, I, I should be on the lookout for this? Or it, 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 does it just happen? Uh, what, when, when should we start looking out for that? So actually in our normal uh, children's screening uh, or even baby screening by uh, the pediatrician, the screening tests actually incorporate vision screening already. So uh, if a child was newborn and they go to the pediatrician, they will check the, what we call the wet reflex. And that is actually part of the way to find out if there, somebody has developed a cataract at a very young age. And throughout life, children go through uh, many different uh, times of vision screening, and that would be one way of picking it up. Another way to pick it up oftentimes is by parents. Uh, so parents notice that the, ch the, the children somehow doesn't behave the same way. For example, they may have a very strange way of fixing or looking at things. So some people, for example, some children by, for, prefer, prefer to have like a head uh, turn the um, direction, looking at the, way the objects in uh, on one side of the eye. Some people might notice that one of the eyes may turn either out or in because they're not using the eye so much. 
Uh, and in general, those would be some of the early signs that something may be not quite right. It may be cataracts, uh, and it's very hard to know exactly what is causing those symptoms, which is why, in general, children with those symptoms will be referred to see an ophthalmologist for detailed assessment. Well, excellent, Dr. Fung. Thank you for that. And uh, you talked about uh, children looking at things differently and kind of kind of the way that they, they act. Are there other symptoms that, uh, we, that the parents should be on the lookout for to be like, hey, this is something I should, you know, go to my doctor to take, they, they should take a look at it? There are a number of conditions that can mimic cataract as well, and that's something that we definitely will tell parents to look out for as well. So for example, if the eye has a white reflex rather than a red reflex, which we call leukocoria, it may be due to a cataract or it may be due to some other conditions too. When we see that or when parents see that, we do that advise them to see their pediatrician, if not their eye care provider as soon as possible. Perfect. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Fung. And uh, what treatment options are, are available uh, for us? So we mentioned that cataract surgery in children is quite different. And cataract surgery remains the primary treatment modality for children who have a visually significant cataract. I mentioned the term visually significant because, as I mentioned early on, not all children with cataracts require surgery. And really that decision is down to what we see in the clinic and how they perform, for example, on vision testing and so on and so forth. And I want to make sure that I emphasize the point that just because you have a cataract or your child has a cataract doesn't mean they automatically need surgery. But let's say they do need, require surgery, then in general, uh, for children having cataract surgery, it would be done under general anesthesia. It's something that we do not want children to have to tolerate awake. Uh, and um, the surgery itself will involve removing the cataract lens and possibly inserting an intraocular lens in the eye. Some children qualify and some uh, children do not, so we can talk a little bit more later on on who would and who would not. And some children, again, requires an additional step of what I call a vitreous cleanup. Uh, and therefore, the technique is quite different compared to adult cataract surgery. Perfect. And, and you brought it up, adult cataract surgery. Uh, but I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the pediatric cataract surgery, if we could. Uh, is there a way that you could walk us through that? Like how, like how, how does it work exactly? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, to break into sort of the different ways that we do cataract surgery in children, uh, I was kind of broadly spe uh, sort of divided into cataract surgery for infants, cataract surgery for toddlers, and cataract surgery for young children who are older than the toddlers, uh, because the way that we treat the surgery is is very different. In infantile cataract surgery, what we aim to do is to remove the cataract and then we remove some part of the uh, vitreous, which is the jelly in the eye. Um, the way I explain to parents, uh, which was the way that I'm gonna tell you now, is imagine the cataract is like an M&M that has a chocolate coating and chocolate inside. When we do the cataract surgery, we access the eye through this small keyhole uh, at the area where the color part of the eye meets the white of the eye. It's called a limbus. Using very small uh, instruments, almost like a needle type uh, a vacuum cleaner, we go inside and open the cataract, the M&M coating on one side of it. We move the chocolate inside of it, okay? Usually in other cataract setting, we will stop at that point. But for infants, when we do the cataract, uh, the cataract surgery, we would actually make a second opening in the bottom of the M&M coating almost like forming a donut. But once we've done that, we'll remove some of the, uh, the vitreous, which is the jelly, just behind the cataract lens as well. The reason we do this extra step of removing the back uh, plate as well as the vitreous is because infants can actually form a new cataract after the first one being removed very quickly. If we leave those structure behind, they could become a scaffold for the lens to regrow. And obviously we don't want to have to go back and do another surgery so quickly after the first one. And that's why we do these preventative measures. Typically speaking in infants younger than the age of one year or so, I personally do not put an intraocular lens in the eye. They grow very fast and therefore their eyes also change very fast. Uh, so if we put a lens in the eye, we would probably just be guessing what we are supposed to put in. Whereas if we use something such as a contact lens, it may be an easier and better option because then we can keep on changing the contact lens as the child grows and suiting, suiting the needs of the child uh, over time. Well, perfect. Again, thank you for that, Dr. Fung. And I really did like the M&M and donut uh, analogies that make me pretty hungry. So <laughs> it, made, it made it easier for me to understand. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Fung, I know that with surgery, there's always a lot of risk involved. 
But specifically with this, like what, what, are, what are the risks that, that, that are involved with, with pediatric cataract surgery? So like any cataract surgery or any, any eye surgery, uh, I always mention that there is a risk of uh, infection and bleeding. They're not very common, but we do have to mention it because of the potential of the serious complication. The risk we estimate is 1 in 2,000 to 1 in 4,000 chance. Specifically for pediatric cataracts, um, we know that if, especially in young children, when we remove the cataract, uh, there's a chance to, to, for the cataract to regrow again, especially if we leave any scaffolding behind. Uh, and that's why in infantile cataracts, we remove some part of the uh, lens capsule, or so we call the m and coating, uh, as well as the anterior fissures. Uh, and in slightly older children, let's say toddlers, who we do put in intraocular lenses, we still remove those structures so that we don't have that uh, regrowth happening soon after. One other uh, unfortunate and also common uh, complications actually is eye pressure issues or glaucoma. Up to about uh, 20% of children could be what we call glaucoma suspect, suspicious of developing something called glaucoma, or actually have glaucoma. And what glaucoma does is that it causes the eye pressure to go up and can cause, it, and it can cause optic nerve damage irreversibly. And that's why after cataract surgery, we have to keep on uh, sort of a close monitoring of these children long after surgery until they into their adulthood. Um, because children are still developing their vision during early stages of life, uh, there are other issues that can be associated with a weaker uh, visual system because of the cataract. For example, there may be times when the eyes doesn't see so well, even though structurally it's all very sound. That would be something we call amblyopia. Colloquially, some people mention it as lazy eye. Another thing that might happen is that the eye may not uh, the, the eye that had a cataract may not point the same direction as the other eye, which will cause strabismus. It may be the eye is crossing or maybe it's wandering out. And again, that depends on how good the vision would be and whether the cataract was detected early on. The very rare uh, uh, side effects or complications such as uh, retinal detachment uh, uh, and um, bleeding in the eye, that, those are not so common, but we still mention it. Well, excellent. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Fung. And uh, you actually spoke on it a little bit about keeping an eye on the children after surgery. And I wanted to kind of ask about post-operative uh, like care. Um, how, how involved is the process after surgery? How, how important is that? Um, again, it, if the child is younger, the process is more intensive. And so let's use the sort of infantile cataract situation to illustrate how intense it could be. Uh, typically speaking, after the surgery, uh, within the sort of the normal post-operative care, we would be seeing the child at day one, at week one, and then a month after the surgery, making sure that the eye is recovering well, not having any inflammations or any other issues. We mentioned that in infants who had a cataract surgery done, they may require to wear a contact lens in the eye, and that will require its own uh, follow-up setting to have the lens uh, fitted and also to have it keep on being monitored. Depending on how rigorous and how also easy it is for children to come back to us to see us, uh, the follow-up after the initial three months could be somewhere between six to three, six weeks to three months time. Uh, and um, I think in a year, so therefore you can break it down, that in a year's time, it could be about five to uh, 10 times in a year that they have to come back to the clinic to be checked on either the contact lenses or the eye itself, et cetera. Gotcha. And again, thank you for that, Dr. Fung. And I think you uh, may have s spoke on it just a little bit there, but I, I wanted to ask you about the long-term effects. Or, like, what are the long-term side effects of all of this and how will it affect the child as they grow? Right, so the long-term effects of the cataract really depends on when we detect it and how quickly we can intervene. So uh, there are sort of guidelines in terms of how early we want to intervene. In an infant, if we get to them early, uh, and we can speak later on about the timeline as such, uh, in the long term, if they have cataract well uh, uh, treated and they have all the other side effects controlled as well, they could see very well. For example, uh, I like to use a functional kind of level to describe to parents. Uh, it's not unusual for them to hit the DMV level for driving distance, for example, 20, 40, 20, 60, that kind of level. Um, some uh, children actually does excellent and can have almost 20, 20 vision, if not 20, 20 itself. So the long-term outlook could be good as long as, as I said, having close-up follow-up, making sure that all the complications and side effects are controlled for and also treated.
Well, perfect. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Fung. And um, what happens if the pediatric cataracts just goes untreated? Uh, the parents don't do anything and uh, the, it, it, nothing happens. What, 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 would, what would happen? So that's a really good question because it ties in in terms of how what happens when the cataract is detected late. Sometimes, for example, the cataract in the beginning may be very small or may be very challenging for anyone to see and then only being detected later on. Uh, I mentioned early on that infant cataracts may need to be detected at a certain, certain time point. We believe in a uh, one eye cataract situation, so only one of the two eyes being affected. The latest we want to intervene would be about uh, six to eight weeks of age. When a, an infant is born with bilateral or both eyes cataracts, we have a little bit more relaxation in terms of the timing or intervention, but we still want to go in at the latest before uh, 10 to 12 weeks of age, which is about three months of age. Anytime be beyond that, there would be some uh, uh, effects on the facial development. Um, if, let's say, some uh, a child was born that way and then having a cataract in the eye and wasn't detected until they're two years old, I would expect them to have some element of the amblyopia, which is the laziness of the eye, unable to see well. And even if the cataract surgery was done and we've done everything we can, we gave them the best pair of glasses or contact lenses, there will still be a ceiling effect of how much the vision can improve, which is why early detection is such an important thing to do. Well, definitely. Like I said, early detection, very important. So all your parents out there, early detection is very important. Thank you for that, Dr. Fung. And um, are there any new technologies or new developments that are on the horizon right now that we should be on the lookout for? So uh, you might not believe it, but actually intraocular lens usage in children is relatively new. Uh, it's been having a pretty good track record uh, in adults for many, many years, but in children it's still relatively new. Uh, and there have been a, a few influential and very important studies guiding us at what age we can start using these intraocular lenses in the ideal setting. There's no fixed rule about what's the, uh, the ideal age, so to speak because there are social situations or environmental situations where our hands are a little bit more forced that we have to use the intraocular lens early on. But uh, in my hands, if I'm allowed to give it the best amount of time and also the most ideal setting, uh, I would like to usually use intraocular lenses when children are about a year, if not older. Other technologies that are coming in right now uh, involve, for example, medications that help us to keep the eyes dilated, uh, at the time of surgery, also afterwards to give the antibiotics and, and, and anti-inflammatories, as well as some sort of, uh, you know, you may have heard about this, the femtosecond laser, um, you know, is something that, again, in adult surgery is pretty commonplace now to have laser cataract surgery. Uh, this is just being uh, developed or looked at in terms of applying it in pediatrics. I think it's still a bit of a, a long road before we can see commonplace using femtosecond lasers all the time, but I think it's pretty exciting ex a development. Well, definitely exciting and definitely fascinating to hear about those new technologies out there. And uh, Dr. Fung, uh, before we leave today, was there anything else that you would like to tell our audience? Uh, I think, you know, we mentioned early on, I cannot, uh, you know, mention it or emphasize it more, is that if, you know, there is a cataract, it's very important for early detection and also timely intervention. So if you have any concerns or any uh, suspicion that there may be a cataract, go and see your eye, eye care provider uh, and uh, make sure that, you know, we have checked the eyes, making sure that we can say, yep, we have seen the, uh, the, the eye themselves in full detail and nothing wrong there. Or if there is a cataract to get to, uh, to see the surgeons uh, and also get it treated uh, as soon as possible. Well, excellent. You heard it there, folks. Uh, if, if you uh, suspect anything, go and see your eye doctor right away. Everyone, that was Dr. Simon Fung from Los Angeles, California. Dr. Fung, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. And again, uh, appreciate that.